Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 51 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. Now, in the last episode, we added a major overhaul to Swords and added this big new central park to the island. Today, I've got another set of time lapses for you, this time over on Crown Farms, and a big logistical challenge, which is to say, I want to improve the production of souvenirs, something that is notoriously difficult to do. Now, this has all been spurred on by the fact that my customer workforce from the tourists have actually, has actually kind of taken a dip. So let's investigate why that is, and then you'll see my reasoning for wanting to improve souvenirs. So here we have one of our hotels, which house, of course, our tourists. All of their needs are capped, or a lot of the needs, from the restaurants, specifically restaurants, cafes, bars, and of course, the Iron Schlong, which acts as a restaurant, has been capped negative 20%, right? So they can only go up to 80. And that has meant that our population is at 450-ish out of 500. Now, I was looking into why this is. It seems like they've got a problem with the recent newspaper. They have fur coats, they have jewelry, and they have lemonade. No problem in the supply chain there, but they don't have souvenirs. They get them every now and then, but then it falls down. We don't, we don't make enough to satiate the demand. I think we make something like 8 tons per minute, and they need 20 tons per minute. It's very difficult to get the supply, the raw materials really, together to make the souvenirs in the chemical plant. So I'm just going to pause this one temporarily anyway. Now, I haven't fully met the demands of every single hotel in terms of their happiness needs. You know, a museum could be doing a little bit better, the botanical garden is kind of far away, and even the zoo is only at 98%, despite having so many zoos with huge attraction values and multiple bus stops like covering all of them. It's kind of a tricky thing, you know, For to make the island look nice, I don't think I can really achieve 100% on all of these without having the hotels really right next to them. So I'm willing to forego a little bit of the happiness that these tourists are expected to have. Now, if you look at the title here, it says Euphoric Tourist. They're extremely happy. In fact, they have 41 happiness overall when you add up all the attractiveness, the fact that we're not at war, the luxury goods we've given them, and the different hotspots uh, around them locally. But the newspaper, again, has given this negative five, which seems to be the root cause of this issue here. Why? I, I don't really know. I mean, the newspaper problem was that there was a catastrophic explosion in Steindelspreen. Now, this is one of our glaciers in the Arctic. A gas mine blew up, which they often do. <laughs> and there's not much you can do to kind of offset that. I've got lots of ranger towers up there to try and, you know, keep that risk down. But it happens. No one died. It was all fine. And yet, our tourists arriving here in the luscious island of, uh, of swords, the exquisite metropolis, are saying like, oh, we heard a gas mine exploded and, you know, 20% of them don't want to arrive to our hotels here. It's madness. Absolutely madness. But I thought what would be a fun thing to do is to try and give them their souvenirs and see does that make any difference. I mean, I doubt it will. It says souvenirs will give plus four happiness. I doubt that's really going to be the thing that tips us over the edge, but I thought it'd be a fun logistical challenge to actually try and solve because for the last few episodes, we'll be doing overhauls and things like that. And then I've just been kind of zooming in, showing the different areas of the island and then maybe solving one or two small little issues, but nothing, nothing major. This is a major one that could take multiple episodes if I don't have it all figured out in this one. So to make souvenirs and have them delivered here, we have, of course, have our island of Lusk, our factory island, and they're made in chemical plants. So we need camphor wax, glass, and then cotton in order to pull together what we need for a souvenir in a chemical plant that takes 100 engineers. So I was thinking to myself, this would be a perfect thing to do over in Crown Farms because there is a huge abundance of glass over there. If we look at all islands, click intermediate, and then we check our glass production, we actually make six, or we consume 60 tons per minute and we make up to 28, but they're not all currently online. A lot of them are offline because they're in Crown Farms, not being used to their full potential. We have this huge backlog over there and an excess workforce that we need to, that we could ramp up the production. And we can bring in thousands of tons of material of quartz sand, which is what we'll refine into glass. So the only thing then what we need to do is bring them the canfor wax and bring them the cotton. Now you might be like, how are you um, keeping your glass going? Of course we have Docklands importing a, a bunch of glass to keep things moving. So, where is it? Here we have 864 glass comes in regularly. It's actually not enough even as it stands, but... 
I can't remember exactly. I can't remember exactly why it is the way it is. I thought we counted that up and that was correct, but it seems like we're running just a little bit short every now and then. Um, so this is what prompted me to think like, well, we've got this massive factory island over in Crown Farms that we could, with 2,000 free engineers, that we could definitely like ramp up the production. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this episode, trying to figure that all out. I haven't looked into it too deeply to see exactly what we need, but I know that we're probably going to also have to go to the New World and see if we can increase the amount of camphor wax we're producing. So, before we get into the actual logistical side of things here in Crown Farms, I've been busy at work on an overhaul. I said that I was going to clean up the villagers, and you'll notice they're all gone, or the farmers, rather. And that's because I've relocated them over to the island lake, or the, the continent's lake. And then I also cleaned up some of the factory out this way. So I've got that in a time lapse for you. I thought we'd jump straight into it right here, and then afterwards we'll start plotting out what we can do to get these souvenirs made over in Crown Farms and delivered back to the old world. Let's begin! Alright everybody, starting with the factory redesign and then about halfway through this time lapse we'll move over to the Lakeside Farmer Village. So, this is largely a factory redesign, right? It's largely a reorganizational effort to try and encapsulate as many buildings as I can inside of these trade unions and then kind of lock the whole thing behind a wall to kind of make it look like its own little factory district and sort of match what's going on on the right side there. You know, we've got the advanced rum distilleries, malt houses and schnapps all in this mega factory to the right basically going to just mirror that over here on the left. Although, being slightly low on influence now, our trade unions are very um, diverse. Every socket is actually covering a different production chain, which isn't entirely efficient. You know, you kind of want one trade union to boost something to an, a huge maximum in a way. But quote unquote, for now, <laughs> this one is going to be covering lots of different things. And then maybe in future, if we feel like we need more of something, Maybe then I'll throw in another item and then move some of these buildings into another section of the factory. So the overall factory layout really won't change that much, but the insides might, depending on what's going on with the trade unions and what we need. So starting off over here, I've already moved the trade union into place. This one's covering glass, advanced coffee roasters, and then the fur dealer. And then we've got a new power plant that I've put down, or at least moved in. I'm not sure if it's a brand new one or not, actually. Uh into a bit more of an optimal position. So it's covering things a little bit more optimally and there's a little bit less overlap with the other power plant. There's only one train line leading up to it, but it breaks off of a train line where there's two. So there's two running parallel all the way up to the oil fields. And then that kind of kind of split off into one if it wants to go into the center of the factory. Um, so I think that works out pretty well, uh, at least from my testing, it seems to. Because I don't think you need two in the center. Although if things get really complicated, you might, which could be a huge problem <laughs> we'll deal with in the future. Um, so this bottom section is actually almost already done. I've actually researched a bunch of extra coffee roasters. So I'm just making room for them now. So currently we have four, and I think I end up having eight. So we're doubling them up. Um, and they're going to require malt to produce what they make, so uh, to produce coffee. So you can just see I'm planting the extra ones in. We've actually got room for more if we really needed them. Uh, but we've al we already make excess coffee globally, believe it or not. So we're well on our way to supplying even more investors if we wanted them. Uh, down in the bottom here with the Spectacle Factory, and I think... I'm not actually sure what that building on the left is. I could, yeah, not too sure. It might be windows or something? I can't quite remember. Uh, and then we've got the Smelteries and then the Clothes and Penny Farthings. So that's all down on the bottom right, although that's largely going to move. So the Smelteries are not covered by any trade unions and never have been, so I'm just going to leave them where they are. And then this top trade union area here. And I know I'm jolting the camera around a lot. It's, it's a lot better when we get to the uh, farmer village. Um, but this is what actually prompted the redesign. It's the jewelers. So we've got five jewelers now. And that pretty much makes jewelry for the entire global production chain. Uh, and entire global population, really. Which is really just two islands, I suppose, that consume jewelry. But it does mean I got to save... Uh, I think four contracts within Docklands have just been eradicated now because we make so much jewelry thanks to the trade union item that we got that replaces gold with gold ore and then we bring in gold ore through Docklands. So it's a way cheaper way of doing it. Uh, instead of getting the final product, we get in the raw product and use our workforce to make the final product, which obviously is much more efficient and much better. It's really great looking back on these things. You know, I often say, and people often point out throughout the series, I'll say, oh, this is for now. I'll get back to this later. And this is one of these episodes where I'm getting back to it. You know, I'm getting back to it, cleaning everything up. And then you just get so much more out of the same buildings because you've just optimized it a little bit. 
Um, so that factory is almost done. That that top part of the factory there in the corner that we're working on now, that is a mis mismatch mess of loads of different buildings I just decided to throw in there just to encapsulate them so they're covered by electricity. So there's bread, there's uh, tallow, all sorts of things are in there that aren't even being affected by the trade union whatsoever. It was more just to kind of put it into that factory. Anyway, we'll have a look at it at the end of the time lapse, but here we are over towards the lake where we're designing out the lakeside village. So there's about 120 houses, just houses, not people, 120 farmer residences on Crown Farms right now. And I'm largely just relocating them, but because they're so cheap, I don't have to move them. I can just build them fresh. It's, a, it's not like the investors or engineers where you kind of want to move the building. So I was trying there to see if I could get away with copy and pasting a kind of a layout I had for a farm and I decided no 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 I think you kind of have to do it individually so using my patented famed method of starting from the outside putting all the houses down on, on the extremities of the borders of where you're allowed to and then working our way in and then basically figuring out where the market the uh, pub and then of course a supply warehouse is going to go because I'm going to build these farms in and around the houses themselves to kind of make it look a little bit more lived in, a bit more organic. Now, something I actually cut out of this time lapse was my trial and error of testing out what a pig farm, cattle farm, and sheep farm look like when it's literally just one to a house and then a few more houses and then another one to a house and they're really like completely broken up and dispersed. It didn't look that good. So I've actually gone with a method where it is a bit more clustered. So there's going to be a cluster of maybe three or four and then a group of houses around them and then a cluster of like one or two and then a group of houses around them and then every now and then there might just be like one off on its own behind a house it looks much better that way because when i zoomed out and i saw like just little clusters or um yeah little pockets of them it, i don't know it just it's hard to explain i guess i should have maybe shown it but it kind of looks like i don't know i don't even know how to describe it it just looks like everyone's living in filth <laughs> and maybe they are but um it just looks a little bit better this way to me so I, this is why I've stuck with this system, which is having a cluster of several of the same type of farm and then having it next to a warehouse and maybe a market to make it look like, yeah, there's markets at the back of the, the warehouse where they get their goods, the pigs are processed or whatever, and then this is where they come out. Speaking of, actually, I don't know where the slaughterhouses are going to go if I'll put them up here or keep them by the factories. I think it makes sense to keep them by the factories, really, um, at least for efficiency purposes, but we could have them up near the supply warehouses here. There's actually loads of space here, so there's definitely room to do it. So I'll, I'll work on that and think about it. Anyways, what I'm doing, we've got largely a lot of the pig farms in. I think there's something like eight that we need to include. And uh, I don't actually manage to fit all of them in. So we'll be coming back here in a future episode to add more houses and then move some of the remaining farms up here too. Uh, but I'm just going through things with the bright harvest ornaments, adding in the hay bales, the flatbed wagons, trying to make the supply warehouses look a little bit more lived in, uh, the trails in and out of the farms look a little bit more lived in, some apple orchards every now and then, staggered houses, uh, and so on and so forth. So all of these farms are actually using bright harvests, bright harvests um, silos, right? So they take in a huge amount of grain. They're already doing that, so it's no extra cost on the production chain. But it does mean that the pig farms look kind of weird because a lot of their modules actually come with uh, silos. And I've only just really noticed it now in, the, in watching this back. So I might go through them and change their look so that they actually don't include any of their own um, silos. And we just use the actual bright harvest silos that could look a bit better. Um, so here we're just putting down the sheep. Um, or laying out the sheep, putting them down sounds a bit sad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically laying them out. It's actually quite an interesting building because it's so basic. A sheep farm is a 3x3, three three, and its modules are 3x3. Three three. A regular farmer house is a 3x3. Three three. So they're all very grid-like. You can really make them look extremely uniform if you wanted to, which makes it challenging to make it look nice because you have to stagger them. But it's so inefficient or feels so wrong to do that when it's just laid out perfectly for you. But I think I've done a good job. Um, so that's basically it. Like I said, it's not done yet. Some extra houses, if we want to add them, this is the, re uh, the removal of all the existing houses. If we want to add extra, we'll have to come back to the area in future. All right, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The sun is setting over our lakeside farmer residence. This quite reminded me of setting up the very first time lapse we ever did, which was Potato Village, back all the way in episode one or episode two, I think, and then to be subsequently followed by Grain Village. The genius tier names that I come up with for these places is amazing. And then, of course, we have this now being Lakeside Village, I guess, in Crown Farms. 
it's nice to see that the farmers have a, a lovely area to retire to um, and reside in. You know, this I, jokes aside, I mean, this place does look incredible with the waterfalls, the mountain ranges up in the distance. You know, I haven't really had a look at that in close detail since I think it was episode 19. It was the Christmas special, anyway, when we took a walk around the mountains. Uh, excellent, really, really great kind of Easter egg that they've put in there. If you haven't seen that one, I recommend checking out the episode or doing it yourself, walking the mountain trail, which you can start by stepping down here and walking up this way. Uh, anyway, let's just fix the day-night cycle. So this place isn't actually done yet. There's still some room for expansion. Of course, I've got blueprints out on either side of it, so definitely want to add in some extra stuff in the future. There's still some houses, or sorry, not houses, farms rather, that have not yet been relocated over there. So there's still a little bit of work to be done. And you can see I've plotted some fields here for future farm expansion, agricultural expansion, I guess you could say. Man, the lighting just looks so incredible. I'm just blown away by it. It'll be rising over the mountains soon. In fact, that actually doesn't really make sense yet, does it? If there's this no sun, the how are they lit? <laughs> of a major discovery. Oh, be quiet. Actually, that's kind of interesting. The Research Institute, I, uh, I'll digress for just a moment. Uh, at the Research Institute, I've decided to queue up a bunch of unique items. Excuse me, and characters that I haven't yet come across. So Aiden Isaac, world famous in Basin Chef. Uh, I actually think I do have him, but I went to statistics and I clicked to like unknown. And then I just basically queued up like a bunch of unknown characters I have for trade unions and things, just to see if we could get anything that's kind of unique. Uh, this is something people mentioned in the comments. Captain Moby, old, old dog of the sea, affects fisheries and pearl farms. Um, productivity is increased and his extra goods that he provides back is tallow and gold. And there's someone else that mentioned in the comments that there's items you can get that removes the need for pearl farms, I think, or some, something along those lines. Sure, if I just search pearls, we'll find it. Um, regarding the jewelry. Then we have uh, Kala Lily of the Desert Bloom. Affects all in basin crop farms, and including the bees, reducing their modules and giving you indigo fertility. Dean, the Dean of Deansville, definitely want to be putting him in with the scholars. We actually haven't. I thought we did, but we haven't done that yet. So max residence 20%. We're using one that gives us 15. Uh, Francois Thorn, the industrial reinforcer, affects brick and concrete factories, provides you back with some wood veneers and uses Farmers instead of workers, I think, which is pretty interesting. And then uh, we have Anna Union, engineer of the extravagant steamers, allowing us to build the extravaganza steamer ourselves. So I just thought it was worth mentioning some of those items for all you nerds out there. All right, so that is our new and improved lakeside village. Then we have obviously the grow. I've grown the industry here, so this is a little bit just kind of. Um, I tried to be relatively efficient, squeeze things in under the same trade unions. It's not necessarily final, as we build up this island a little bit more, might end up changing some things around. And we might even have to do it soon, because this is where all the glass production is, in this section here. So we've got six glass makers. Back on the theme, of course, if you remember, we're dealing with souvenirs is what I want to improve. So we've got a bunch of quartz sand and a bunch of glass here that's been produced. And basically, I think we need something like six or seven chemical factories, and we're going to see how that all shakes out in the um, statistics screen. So let's get to work. So if we go over to tourists, we have our chemical factory, chemical plant. It needs power. I'm just going to lay them out here for now because this is powered, this area. Uh, let's just do this. One, two, three. This World's Fair is really in the way. I really don't want it. People are saying like, oh, you know, why don't you move it onto one of the islands? I just I just don't want to. I, I like the World's Fair that we have in Swords. I don't necessarily ever want to run one here. And uh, I like, you know, the feeling that Swords is the capital, not this place. That's just me anyway. We only built it for the quest, which we finished. Speaking of quests, there is actually a quest we could do back in Swords that I've yet to finish. Um, anyways, I digress. I digress. So four chemical plants, just like that. Don't know if four is going to even be enough. So currently, I think globally, we make eight tons per minute for souvenirs. And I think we do it in... So I, th I think that's just with two chemical plants. So we need five. We're basically going to need five. Okay. So let's just set up a, a fifth one then, like this. Temporary placement. You know, I'll move this stuff again later with the next factory expansion, as it were. Something like that. Hopefully we've got enough concrete and things to get building. Alright. So. In one of your factories. 
Souvenir. We need camphor wax, cotton, and glass. Select the formula. Broke out. Oh crap, you know what? I should have just copy and pasted that when it's done. Now we've just selected four times over, I think. These factories are exploding. You're gonna have to check what that is as well. Alright. Sorry about that, but there we go. So we've got four five souvenir factories working overtime now. So they're gonna be sucking up the glass like crazy. Uh, so we can check what that's going to be. I'm keeping it local to Crown Farms, just for now, to see what they're going to be using. So their demand already is exceeding the amount that we produce here. But we could bring some in through Docklands, or I could maybe try and squeeze yet another Glassmakers in. I mean, it would be good to surround it with this. So what's currently being affected by it? Currently, we get a 35% productivity increase because of the mechanized glass blower. Uh, and the range is within here. Hmm. Okay, then. Maybe we'll just take two of them and just build them locally out here. This should be powered as well, I think. Yeah. And will that do it? That does do it. Okay. So this might have to be reorganized in the future. Only getting 36 or 35 productivity, it's not that big of a deal. Currently, we're using the guy that um, helps coffee tremendously. And then the fur dealer, and then we just stuck this one in as well. So that, that, you know, we could specialize these kind of mini factory districts a little bit better. So I'm not necessarily too worried about just moving those glass things in future to something that encompasses glass a little bit better. So we'll just pause all these for now. They don't need to work. So we have to redirect cotton, and then redirect a bunch of camphor wax here. So let's check our trade routes. Actually, let's just check what the hell's been exploding and see what's going on. Is that it? Okay, that's all. Not that big of a deal. So this is where we've got a bunch of Camp 4 wax now. I've got ships that oh, just yeah, arrived okay. here. I decided just to free up the glass just to get it producing again. Um, so here, we're going to take the Camp 4 wax and just move it manually just one time to get us kick-started, as I often say. So you can take a bunch of cotton and you can take a bunch of Camp 4 wax, which is here. So this is our um, second extravaganza, or sorry, Great Eastern. We have two of them now. Stations. We'll just select them to go back to Crown Farms. There we go. So yeah, they got different skins on them, which is kind of nice to have just two now because they're both unique, which is kind of cool. There's only two skins available, I believe. So they're off, both heading towards Crown Farms on slightly different trajectories. Oh, there we go. Delivering everything that's going to be needed to continue this stuff. So, I'm going to now delete these, or at least pause them. Sealed the valves. Sealed the valves. All right, we sealed the valves on those buildings, and let's have a look at where cotton's going. New world to old world. So it's just getting dropped into Lusk, and then some of it is going off towards Embesa. Interestingly. So I'm probably going to make a new ship, or let me check the route that we have already, the routes, rather, that we have going to Cape Trelawney. Because we could double up. Now I've got 50 influence. Oh, by the way, a good commenter picked me up on the fact that the reason we got 10 influence back last time was because um, of the newspaper propaganda that I was using, and I just forgot that obviously that takes 10 influence every time you want to, well, depending on the one you use, but I was using one that costs 10. Uh, so thank you for that. It is amazing how I miss these things when they're literally in my face. Anyways, um, we could build more ships with that 50 influence. We could get another extra, um, extra, uh, Great Eastern if we wanted to. Or we could try to be a little bit more efficient and double up on some of these routes. These routes largely just come here and dump things. Let's see, Lusk to Crown Falls. So we're picking up sewing machines here at Lusk. And then we're going off to Crown Farms. We could pick up cotton as well. Because why the hell not? So we want the raw material, right? The raw... Is it an intermediate? Agricultural, that's it. And is that it? Oh yeah, and then we'd want camphor wax as well, right? Hmm. Maybe not the best idea then. I think what we'll do is just make our own route with those two things on it. That seems logical to me. <laughs> so let's do that. It might make sense if we didn't have the sewing machines, but we do. So I'm just trying to think, is there anything else I'd want to do that with? Not really. So this picks up all these unique goods, goes out to goes out to Crown Farms, and then comes back with light bulbs. Yeah, so. Alright, we'll just make a new route. Sorry for dilly-dallying there. Let's just queue up 
a ship that can start that, though. New cargo ship. It's been a while since we made one, actually. Altitude stable. I love um, just watching a ship after it's been a while and seeing what they do. So he just deposited gas in here. Is that a thing? Well, apparently so, and then it must get taken up to uh, swords. Interesting. I think this is my deposit island for a lot of stuff, and that's why we've got traffic backing up all the time. And this place has been used quite a lot as well. I remember speeding time up and just watching it, and it's like, yeah, there is actually a lot of... Typically, anyway. Quite, I say that, and literally every ship leaves, but I did watch it before, and there was loads of ships here, and I was like, oh, wow, this place is quite busy, actually. But it's such a shame that, obviously, with the speed, and there's still free ports, that they don't all use it. But uh, can't get over that. I'm going to harp on about it every episode, doing nothing to fix it, just complaining. Right, anyways, so that ship is under construction. How long is it going to take? It's going to take seven minutes. Right, in that time, we'll just start making the route. So I'll speed it up. Start making this route. Create the route from Lusk to Cape Trelawney. Crown Farms. And we're going to pick up both this and Camphor Wax. And then we'll assign our new ship to it once we get it. Okay, so this one's going to be called um, Lusk. I need to look at the other names of the other ones. It's been a while. Lusk dash CF one two and now three. Chemical. So I'll just call it chemical because I know it's like oh this is for the chemical plant you know. Um, and we'll assign that to the group Cape to Old World. So there we go. So Lusk to CF3, Lusk to CF1, 2. Can we move these? I don't think you can. Not that it really matters. It's fine. Uh, right. So we'll just wait for that ship. As soon as that ship is done, we'll assign it. And at the moment, How we should be kind of... A renowned personage has arrived. At the moment, we should be kind of stockpiling those goods as well. And if you remember, Your we're not actually consuming them up here. Voyage. I've halted it. So I just had a... By the way, a new newspaper article passed while the time lapse was running in the back... The, well, in between... Right before the time lapse, a new newspaper came up, right, before I came back, if you know what I mean. So that newspaper article is gone, the tourists have regrown back to their full amount. But even so, I'll just be curious to see if this happens again in future. But um, it, even if it, even if we go, go into the unhappiness again, I, I don't really mind. I just want to now sort these four goods out. Now that we fixed jewelry, which was a massive problem before, um, we did that by building five jewelry jewelers. <laughs> in Crown Farms. Now we're basically doing the same thing again by sorting them out with chemical plants for the souvenirs. So if I just have a look really quickly at consumer goods and check souvenirs. We have 150 here, so it'll last them a little while. Keeping them just a little bit happier. Making us bank, because it makes a ridiculous amount of money. Alright, what time is it now? Almost done, a minute and 30 to go. So we'll just speed that up. Is there anything else I need to look at in the meantime? My fleet has arrived. Here we are. So they can start manufacturing souvenirs, and thinking about it, we can now send back souvenirs on the chemical plant. So when we get here, we want to discard all that cargo. If, there's n if we can't unload it, just throw it overboard, it's fine. And now we want to take back the actual souvenirs. And then with our automatic routes, everything should just go back to swords automatically. Ship constructed, there we go. So let's add it on. The Rangoon. A bit of a coup securing their expertise. Alright. So there we go. The Rangoon is now on its way. It's gonna start picking up. Look at that. Full boat straight out to Crown Farms. And then it's gonna come back with nothing, basically, for the first time. And then the second time it makes this trip, it should come back with souvenirs. Actually, no, we'll come back with some, because we've we've manually delivered ahead of time, right, to kickstart it. Of course, that's what I did that for. Uh, right, so let's build that as well. Don't think we even need it, but let's just do it. Now we'll just speed it up so we can watch these all kick into action. So we've got 360 or 350 camp war wax and all of that. Now, the only aspect of this chain that I've left untouched or unchecked for is now how much camp war wax do we need globally and how much are we using globally in fact one thing that i think might confuse it i don't know if it does or not i'm just going to turn off these are paused already but i'm just going to change their 
thing to something else. Just so they don't confuse the statistics. I actually don't think they do, but I can't quite remember off the top of my head, so I'll just do that just in case. Right, so statistics, all islands. We'll scroll down to the, your boy Cam4 Wax, which now has a need of 20, so I guess we only use it in the chemical plants, it seems. Probably. So we're going to have to bolster that quite significantly. Um, what about cotton? It's, uh... Here it is. We also need to increase that. So that... Yeah, it's at 19. So we need to bring it up by 9 tons per minute. Now I wonder if I could be just a tad lazy and check our docklands and see is there a way to bring in raw cotton. I know you can get cotton real. I don't know if you can get the raw cotton. No, it doesn't look like it. The cotton reel is there, the cotton fabric. Alright, looks like we're um, we're doing this manually. So this is where it'll actually be quite a tricky thing to do, I think. And the hardest part is going to be to bring up the cam for wax and the cotton, because space is going to be limited in the new world to do this. So something I'm really quickly going to do as well is check cotton and see what kind of stuff gets us cotton. So, this person produces cotton every fourth cycle. They affect lumberjack huts and charcoal kilns. This person affects sugarcane plantations and brings you cotton once every 13 cycles. Now, I think we've actually... No, I was going to say I thought we had her equipped, but I guess not. This is pro Oh, we have to go all islands. Maybe that's why. Equipped. Identified. Well, we, we've identified her. Just click her. Item location. We do have her. So I'm a little confused about that, but anyway, whatever. So she is here. There she is. Affects sugarcane plantation for 20% productivity. And gives you just a little bit of cotton back. I mean, it's, it doesn't really seem worth it. One out of 13. Although it depends. I mean, we could have... A, there's a lot of cycles here for sugarcane. One, two, three, four, every... Stand aside, boss. Seven seconds, so... I guess that is kind of a lot if we could make that work. Is there anything that just does something like 20%? Productivity 15%. Coca 1 every 5. So let's change him out. This She gives us Coca 1 every 11. So we'd be less on Coca. Alright, let me just check the Coca then really quickly before we commit to this. We make 42 to 38. Let's see what changes there then. Man, we're snot heavy today. Go on, Mrs. Brown. Get in there. Get stuck in. Alright, now we're going to be churning out a little bit of extra cotton. But coca has gone down to 38.38. Oh, look, though. It's just slightly above. That's excellent. And I think it stops working because it's just full all the time. So that's no problem. Seems like we did it. So that's a little bit of extra cotton here. Now, we don't normally produce cotton here. But now we're making three tons per minute. So that's nice. You know, Swapping an item largely doesn't affect anything else, yet gives us back cotton. And we also have cotton fertility here. So there's no reason why we couldn't set up some extra farms like we have here. Because this island's largely full, let's be real. And try to get that sorted. Now, whoops, sorry, this is Benti's island, I got confused. So yeah. It's our sugar factory over there. So we've got all of this space we could utilize for extra cotton and then even extra camphor wax, potentially. So I reckon we should do that. So it's 35 Yornaleros, Hornaleros. And then what about down here? How much workforce do we have? Not that much. No real space for cotton. Any more space for cam 4 wax? Well, we actually don't have any obreros, but we have the base island workforce helping us out there, I guess. So I was going to say, we don't even have enough to get the uh, orchard. Man, it's tough in the new world with, the, uh, with these chains. But we did say it was going to be difficult. Right, cam for wax then. Somewhere out in a location like this might be a good idea. They'd all the rancheras I know. I can't remember how many I said I was going to need. Um, I think one more, but I'll just double check that. So we don't get to see. I think we've only got globally two, and they make, I think it's four each, and we need 20, so we need five. Just check here. Oh, we have four. Oh, man. So it's one every 30 seconds, so two every minute. Oh, yeah, so 
Wow, okay. Oh god, that's a lot. Does that mean we need 10? I think so. Something like that, I don't know. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Um, yeah, I mean, four of them make eight, so if we had 10 of them, that would make 20, right? I think. If my math is right there, I think it is. I'm trying to just double a number, but for some reason that doesn't seem to make sense in my head. Um, I feel like it's supposed to be more than that, but okay. Or less than that. But that just seems like a lot. Alright, let's see if we can connect these up. gonna reach I wonder yep all right so that's gonna be six so that's six so that means we should be making 12 now uh, but we need 20 so we're gonna have to raise the population I mean that's that's what we got to do right uh, bear with me one second I don't think I've ever done this before but my phone is going mental and uh, my dog has been a little bit unwell, so I'm just always on edge that it's going to be something to do with that. No, it's okay. It's all fine. Alright, anyways. Um, uh, Alright, I guess we'll have to try and increase this population. Uh, before I do, actually, just really quickly, let's hop over to Benty. Some people mentioned that Benty probably has demands for certain goods. No, she, doesn't, she actually isn't requesting anything. Because they were saying like, oh, you could supply her with weapons, maybe she'll fight back, but uh, it's not its not in Benty's nature, let's say. I've noticed as well on the map, it drives me mad. Now this is really, really small for anyone who can see on their TVs, phones, computers, whatever. But it looks like there's two areas that have no, there's like two white little triangles on this map. And I was like, oh, I must have missed a patch of fog of war or something. It's not here in the trade view, but it is there in the radar. And... Uh, I don't know what it is, but it drives me mad that it's there. I always see it. Anyway, never mind. Right, so Benty doesn't need anything. We have to increase our population, so let's go. Um, largely pretty happy with the layout of this town, but I guess we'll have to start moving things around. Storeroom's full, boss. That's the wood production that's needed for... Can you double up with this stuff, actually? No. I was going to say it's needed for the... Uh, Rum, rum distilleries and things. Just gonna move them out of the way. I'm being very lazy with this. I should really figure out a long term place for them. But lumberjack cuts are always the kind of thing I just move when we don't need them anymore. Okay, so something like that. So that's the lumberjack huts out of the way. So we don't need that. We don't need this. I'm gonna clear this area here. Oh yeah, oil fields. Hmm. Dare I? Dare I make this decision now? So we have the ability to move these oil fields, all of them if I wish. And there is a cluster over here. I suppose it would make sense to move them over there. This is where I thought about doing it before. Now we can only move, um, I don't know, let's check. Something like six or seven of them, and then that's it. As far as I know, you can't just reset them back either, so once you do it, that's it. So major discoveries, um, mastery of nature, move oil spring. We could do it four times, four times, and that's it then, because then it costs 90,000 points after that, and I don't have 90,000 points. We have 83,000, I think is our cap. Because we already moved five. Yeah. Hmm, okay. Well, how many is in the way? One, two, three, four. And then there's a fifth one there. Well, before I commit to it, I mean, I'm sure I'll probably end up doing it. It seems right, only right that we do that. Yeah, I'm gonna add this somewhere in here. I think we'll build the town down this way first, and that way it's a bit more coastal, it probably looks a bit more natural anyway that way. I gotta... 
I gotta shut my phone off. It's uh, neighbors, basically, is what's happening. All right, there we go. <clears throat> um, hmm. I wonder how this will hold up in the overall supply chain as well. Block of six. Yeah, okay, so down by the coast, I guess we'll start with. change this road to somewhere else just temporarily These guys are going to be pretty far away from the um, the market, I would imagine. What the hell was that? All right. Um, yeah, pretty happy with that. A little bit staggered, kind of coastal, looks kind of nice, beach houses and so on. But they are going to be far away from a lot of the amenities now. What do we have here, by the way? Oh my god, we've got a town hall with nothing in it. I could just raise the workforce this way. Hmm. Let's search globally for things that we have, items that can help this right now. In storage, and identify it. And then it's going to be a town hall item. So we'll search uh, Yornalero residence or Yornalero workforce. Nothing, really. Just nothing at all. Are you. What's. Why can you even search it then? <laughs> oh, all islands. That might be why. No? Unknown. Equipped. Hmm. Lately I've been very confused by this. I feel like I'm doing it wrong. Maybe a trade union helps it, does it? Substitute workforce. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's nothing that seems to boost the, the workforce. Or re what about residents? Ah, okay. Affects residences. So it doesn't even have to be old world. Happiness. So Yonalero uh, residents. Max residents, 10%. Old and new world. Oh yeah, I didn't realize that. I thought a lot of these were just old world. Or uh, yeah, old world. That's pretty good. So she's great. We could just try to get her again in the research institute or something. 20% max residences. Chance of illness is down. And bonus residents from the things that they have, which they all have. So we could send Saint D'Artois out here. Just to help us along. And maybe then cut down on some consumption or something. So if we click her and then go to the research institute. Move her up that way. What else could we do? Income per house. I might have to look at this myself. Captains of industry. This is actually, we actually have two books for this already. Increased chance of illness though. Yeah, I already have two of those that aren't being used. Might just bring them Can up here. Can you imagine? A life of servility and senescence. With no time to accommodate beauty. Art. Chance of illness Knowledge. negative fifty percent. I pity those farmers. You yeah, I could spend I could spend quite a long time in that, really. Where is your loyalty? My loyalty is to my people. It's a total War Rome two quote. As I'm sure many other things. Arminius says it. Not much to really say. Yeah, okay, so they want a church. Let's just give... I'm gonna have to just slam this down kind of temporarily and we'll just pop this here as well. So I'll probably move this somewhere more central in a bit. I'll just keep them happy for now. See, it's fine. Um, but yeah, if we just go back to, I believe, here and I have a look at what we can pick up. I think I've got some items already. Want kitchen, etc. Let's go town hall. There we go. Doctors and healing speed. 
affect all hospitals. Let's just take him in case we need him. I'm going to bring that book with me. That I'm so sure we have. Oh, I think we have it in Cape Trelawney. Damn. Workforce 10%, all residences. Gains a bonus from the school, though. Those things I always thought didn't work here, but I guess we're in the new world. Yeah, alright. Um, chance of illness reduced 50%. Healing speed 70%. What's better? Probably to reduce the illnesses all completely. Alright, off you go to Cape Trelawney, off to Crown Farms. How's that situation with the souvenirs, by the way? That did run out. Let's just check how's it going back here. So we've got the glass that they need. Cotton's coming in still. Camphor wax. If we check our route. It's about to arrive again. Or it's leaving Lusk right now. So we'll see if it comes back with anything. So I guess if we hop over here and we check... Hundred and eighty five souvenirs greatly increasing. I could also add it to the route that takes back different things from here, like the light bulbs. Hmm, I'll think about that. New orders. Um well we might have to wrap up in a moment I'm anyway, but to introduce our new colleague. So you're gonna start working on the next one, yeah? Saint Artois, we're gonna get her again. Yeah, so I'm gonna be monitoring the has it already arrived? The airship? No way. Has it left that quick? Wow, I can never get over the speed of airships. They're so fast. It's not here yet, though. We should see it just going like this, right? I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so, um... I'm going to basically be waiting for that to get to here, pick up the little book items that we I know I have there, then go to the New World, deposit that in here. We're going to get a 40% increase to our workforce. We've already gotten a big increase, but the problem I'm worried about, the reason I want to do it through items is just for now is because I'm not sure if we can handle the extra consumption rate of adding on a big population here. Um, but at least while that's there, we can just, again, before I wrap up, slam down maybe a few more of these. Maybe one there. One here. It's definitely not a good use of space. I might have to change this around because this could be just farmland, I guess. It can make use of all the little nooks and crannies, whereas you should go sit in the shade. these aren't so so flexible, I guess. Let's just send that across this way. So that's four. So that's sixteen in total. We still need a bit more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the other island. So that should be it. So the last thing I'm going to do then is just send the ships that are coming around to pick up the agricultural stuff to this island to make sure that they're doing it. I think they're doing it already. They hit every island and try to pick up whatever they can. Yeah, so at Marbella, they're going to be picking up 50 cam 4 wax now. But that's so much, I wonder if they'll be able to take it back properly. I think I think so. There's two ships on the... Yeah, yeah, two ships are just locally depositing things here. That's it, yeah. Ah, that's probably fine then. It is a lot though, man. It's, it's a difficult thing to get this up and running properly. 20 tons per minute of cam 4 wax. That's quite a lot. And then, of course, it's the um, cotton. So let's have a look at that. We don't have a route locally, I think, for cotton in the New World. No, this island picks it up from there. So what I could do though is search our New World routes again and see, do we pick up anything strange like Portobanus gets felt and tobacco from there? Hmm. It should really be part of this, three and six. Six. Picking up tobacco leaves twice. Maybe that's not worth it. returned from its voyage. I could cut the tobacco leaves out of this, I think. And add that in as cotton. I think. Hopefully I haven't messed that up.
Just saw that we're totally full up on citrus there. See, these two ships aren't enough to even take it out of there. Although it's only taken 43. Oh, it's probably full to even deliver it, is it? No? Hmm. Okay, well, whatever. All right, anyways, so let's do that. So tobacco, I know that I only, I only produce tobacco here, so there's really no point having it on that other ship. So I think that's fine to cut it out of the local supply here, because we already have a ship locally picking it up, so I, th I think that's okay. But anyway, that cotton now, that's gonna, that little bit of extra cotton that's going to get taken from this island and brought to that one should mean that the extra demand that we need to go uh, to Crown Farms should be all right. I just hope that the cotton that gets taken out of the New World is sufficient. Like the, yeah, this ship is picking up 150 of it. I feel like we'll need a second ship for it. Because, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's full up. One ship doing the business like this, I don't think it's going to cut it. It's actually just arrived here now. might even make a dedicated pier for something like this because that's another thing that we need to do. This is a dedicated pier for coffee. Hi. What are you picking up? Agricultural things. We also need some items on these guys. Yeah, I'll have to make a note of that as well. Speed these loading times up. Harbor Master Office might be a good idea here actually considering it's become quite a busy trade port. I think that would make sense. Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Where will we do that? Harbor Master an Office. In one of your factories. Oof, tough though. We can't really cover all the piers. Oh, we could if we put it back here. Get rid of one of the uh, warehouses or just shove it in there or something like that. The fire is out of control. Oh, be quiet. Right, so that's picked up its 150 caoutchouc and its 150 cotton, and then it's going to go back. And that's the only route. So it's probably like every 15 minutes we deliver 150. Behind. Probably just not enough for the amount that we're going to need to go back all so the way to Crown Farms now as so well. Many lives saved. So I'll have to make a note of that. I'm just going to write it down real quick, otherwise I will forget. Cotton needs more ships, something like that, more ships. I can appreciate the Faster loading, etc. This has been a pretty fun episode. I mean, it's great to be kind of back to basics of solving logistical problems in a way. Uh, at least I've enjoyed it a lot. I did think it might take more than one episode. We got pretty close, though. <laughs> the, the building's operational, and they're going. They're sending their stuff back. <gasps> so I just check souvenirs now. Cape to Old World. There it is. Look at that. Three hundred souvenirs on the, the way out. For Let's uh, make this ship look quite. Ah, kind of, oh, it's gone. I was gonna address it to have like look like that. Have a bit of gold. It's quite a prestigious type ship. Carrying all the souvenirs back. Population is looking really good. 75,666. And then, of course, here we have the items for the town hall. That's the captains of industry. Like I said, 40% of workforce. And I'll just send that off right now. Oh, wrong island. We want to go to Marbella. Nice. Uh, so it's going to take a while to grow these camphor trees. As you can see, they're kind of popping up a bit more over here now. Interesting. And then, yeah, to, the only thing we're behind on then is, is uh, cotton and then to make sure it gets delivered. So we might set up a... There's a fuel station here. To take time to learn we could set more. up more cotton um, manufacturing here, like agricultural farms. Cotton on this side and have a few... We've got steam motors here and everything. So I think that's what we'll do next Next episode is just figure out getting the extra cotton, maybe move some of these oil fields and uh, see how much population we can kind of hold onto this island. We won't need that much actually considering bright harvest because you only use like, this doesn't even use any workforce. That's how ridiculous that is. This uses five. Yeah, I can expect to use between five and 10, I think. So we should probably be able to do it with the 50 we have. Alright, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a blast. A Good fun. Also. Hey, it's Ferris again. And uh, hopefully our tourists... If anyone has any idea what was going on mess maybe nice with the right specific... Like the newspaper being such an, a debuff. Like it seems like we're getting plus 10 now. But just having just negative 5, even though it said plus 40, made them unhappy to cap the thing. Like do they have to be over 50 or something? You know, what's the threshold to say that they will or won't cap their intake of things? Um, I'm not too sure. So if anyone knows that, 
uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.